All right, so we're going to continue on with the tantric elements of traditional Armonism. Uh, today we're going to be going over the Svadvas Hastana and the Manipura chakras. Basically, your genitalia chakra and your sun chakra. I'm, we're probably not going to get too extensive this week. We're probably just going to flip through it because it's not really that interesting. Um, we kind of went over what chakras were last week, but let's do a brief review. Chakras are energy points that focus around specific nerve bundles and or and or glands that produce a lot of the uh, chemicals that our body needs in order to function. So when we specifically speak about the different chakras that are in different areas of the body, they all line along the spine. They all sit in front of the spine and they all hit at that direction. What they are is they are charge centers that hold certain things about the human being. When we talked about the Andrayas and the other five uh, expressions, they all have one of each until we get to the higher ones, obviously. So these are the things that also record or make the impression on a subtle body for the expressions and the senses of the body that hit the subtle body. Whether or not that impression remains on the subtle body all depends on how many times that particular chakra has absorbed whatever information or has been opened whatever many times or whatever it's holding or storing. Um, and these are the things that are monitored um, as a subtle body for the energy. We'll get into the two main nerves that crisscross like snakes later on. And then the nadis um, are like smaller chakras, but they're more like chi points, chi that go along the chi lines that also are part of the subtle body. But the chakras are the main points and the main focus when you're working with the concept of liberation. And in order to get the Kundalini rising, you have to, to get to liberation, we have to get all these things, as I say, balanced or purified. And usually it will wreak havoc in the area that it's in if you do it too quickly, or at least a ton of emotions if you do it too quickly. Or if you do it like we do it, where you wind it backwards, it's just one big mess and it, boom, and then you get to deal with it all at once. Uh, so we're going to go over, starting with the Sala Hestana. Chakra, this is going to be uh, for men, it's around the prostate. Um, and it literally, if you, uh, there's the penis, and then right above the shaft of the penis, there's a little notch in there. That little notch directly hits the chakra. That, or you can stimulate it from the backside by going in through the anus and stimulating it from the prostate gland. It all depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to stimulate the chakra to create the effect, you want to hit the prostate gland. If you're trying to do it for arousal and sex, you want to go on top of the penis and work the chakra and massage it in that direction. If that makes sense. For a female, um, as we were talking last week, right inside the vagina is their little quarter spot. It's known as a G spot. That is the one that you're specifically going for. Uh, with this chakra. You can go in deeper and hit the other spot which is by the cervix but it's best to focus on that spot. And again each time you're massaging any chakra you're wanting for the way we're doing it you want to go counterclockwise. Everything's in the motion of counterclockwise whether it be in massaging, doing the meditation, it's all counterclockwise. Counterclockwise refers to Wittershins. I'm sure everybody here knows what Wittershins is. Do I need to explain Wittershins? Uh, maybe so. Okay. <coughs> Wittershins is an old, uh, an old little magical term. It's specifically counterclockwise, and counterclockwise is referencing to destruction. And the reason it references to destruction is because it refers back to the rotation of the Earth around the Sun. Earth goes around the Sun clockwise. That makes sense. Yeah. And Earth spins <coughs> clockwise. So the old conception is that the Earth were to spin or the Earth rotation around the Sun were to go counterclockwise, it would destroy everything. All right. And they call it Wittershins. 
So when you see a lot of the old school like witchcraft books or witchcraft stuff, and they're all literally dancing around the fire counterclockwise and then they're turning themselves counterclockwise as they're going counterclockwise along that, that is to trying to reverse the trajectory of the earth rotation and the earth rotating around the sun. Oh, okay. What, Jared? <laughs> Just lefty loosey, righty tighty, every yes. time. Even with little screws, mm -hmm. even with things Big the size of circles. Yeah, it's the same thing. Well, it's always okay. lefty loosey, righty Yeah, it you know, started <laughs> off them naked with a bonfire, then it moves into wearing elaborate uh, costumes with a sundial and a fire on the sundial. Like, it's kind of got pretty weird. Hmm. But so the term counterclockwise or Wittershins refers to the spinning of the Earth's rotation around the Earth and the Earth's rotation itself. That if it were to spin the other direction, it would cause the destruction of the world and the universe, and blah, 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 blah. Unless you're Superman, in which case it reverses time. Exactly. And that's where science is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, uh, my wonderful drawings, do forgive. The um, chakra here, six leaves. If you recall, the other one only had four. We're going to be moving up from one to six leaves. So when we're doing the counterclockwise rotation, it would be ba, la, ra, ya, ma, ba. And you would do that and rotate your eyes with each one until you get in a nice rhythm. And once you're good and dizzy, you focus on that spot, which is the seed spot, the bindu. But you allow the rest of the bindu to be similar to a um, sigil to stare into and, and formulate into the subconscious mind to create the effect that you're trying to get, which then hits the subtle body to hit the chakra. Does that make sense? So this is your bindu, which is bomb, the mantra of bomb. And this is supposed to be the Shiva moon. I can't draw with the shit, so please forgive me. But it's supposed to be the Shiva moon, like right there. Um, and then below here, which I wasn't even going to attempt, it's supposed to be an alligator. I'm not even going to try to draw an alligator. But yeah. that's what's supposed to go there. It's the spirit animal when you slide. <laughs> <coughs> so, this obviously, since we're talking about genitals, we're talking about reproduction, but it specifically, it's aiming subconscious and emotions. When we talk about the reptilian mind, we're talking about the base emotions of a human being, bam, this is the chakra it affects the most. So we're talking about sex, we're talking about killing, we're talking about fear, we're talking about eating, we're talking about the primal reptilian shit. This is what it affects the most. So whenever you feel the adrenal glands hit, this is where it hits, boom. It starts this one up, but it hits here first. Boom. This is the one that enacts the adrenal glands. Boom. This is the one that we want to work the most in order to work with the deva. This is where that adrenal, that sexual, that lustful, that whatever primal energy irradiates. And that's why the orgasm of the male and the female pushing that energy out is so important to get that one going as much as you can. Makes sense. Um, there is a lot of masturbatory work connected with that particular chakra, but we'll get into that way later. No big deal. Um, the guardian deity for us, obviously, going to be Jahi. Jahi obviously comes from a, a culmination of Shati and um, Anahita. Anahita was originally the Zoroastrian goddess of water, clear water, and springs, and da 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 da. And, and then she decided to affect and go to Arimon and kissed her and created the Mensis, which is why, why you now have the corruption of evil water, Mensis, which is the purification of holy water. And then when you look at the fact that the, the original story of the Sati, where they tore her up in 50 of her parts and in one part her vagina fell, and every year they go and have the bleeding vagina temple thing. And you'd worry to lick on it and be weird and stuff. Yeah, and stuff. Go around in it. And that's how you get the formulation of Jahi. Um, from the deep study I was doing today, and have been doing, it really shows to me that Jahi is an effectively an accumulation mostly of Kali. And we're going to be assessing the fact that 
And this is where we're going to find the Kali or the Jahi aspect uh, within ourselves. And also the fact that when you're dealing with females and you're dealing with the womb and everything else and the mother and the property and all that shit, it all just comes together there. Specifically. Um, element water, obviously. Um, since it's going to be taste, right now we're talking about the Andreas, and one of the senses is taste. But that's what this is over. The body is obviously going to be over the genitals. The reproduction aspect, which is going to be the expression. Color is yellow, and your main mantra is bomb. I'm sorry, the color is yellow. I'm sorry. Blowing my own stuff up. Uh, anything, questions about this particular chakra? Uh, so it's not orange then? Yeah, it's orange and then. No, it's red. So that was red, orange, yellow. Yeah, you're right, it's orange. Yeah, red, orange, yellow. So it is orange. My bad. I got those two crisscrossed. I apologize. It should be orange and yellow. That's what I get for playing with my notes. Okay. So no questions on Jahi and how all that works. Why are we using Jahi instead of Kali if uh, Jahi is like a corruption or like most of the Kali? Uh, because essentially Kali never killed anything other than Asuras. Jahi is known to kill anything and fuck with fire priests and just fuck everything up. And she bleeds in the fire, man. Ah, uh, yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing that a lot of people don't understand that I was really reading into. Um, with her not only bleeding on fire, she obviously steals the Soma. And she eats the Soma. And then that, in form, corrupts her menses even more. And then, so they're saying that with the tantric stuff, that uh, Nanshait and, and Vedic Indra are drinking the Soma, which is the menses of Jahi. So they're drinking this corrupted Soma menses thing. It's pretty gross. Uh, that, the, what does that do for them? Well, you got to remember, I mean, Indra's known for being the Soma king and drinking the shit and being fucked up all the time. Yeah. Well, now, according to the Zoroastrians, by being nasty, he's drinking the Soma menses of Jahi all the time, which makes him evil. All right. Sounds, sounds pretty evil to me, man. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, moving on. My Pure. This is the last of the lower chakras. And this is where most people get stuck. Most people don't get beyond Manipura. Um, because crossing into the heart chakra, you have to actually cross into the spiritual world. Uh, fire. Earth descends into water. Water descends into, or ascends into fire. Um, again, here's your Bindu. Um, you're starting to see with the downward triangle, and you're bringing in the, the pop holders, and you start seeing more and more pop holders all throughout the different yantras that you'll find. It's a not quite sure what the point of the tool is, but it's to represent a pot being in the middle of the blossom flower. Here is your bindu, uh, and the mantra bindu for that is Ram. And who knows about Ram and why Ram is important? Isn't that the noise that she even made to come back up out of hell? Yes. Ah. That is the Bindu scream that he yelled once, and he was able to come out of the deepest pits of hell. Basically, he was in there playing with the Nagas, yelled Ram, and came out. And that's when he ascended into Godhood. That's why Ram is very important. And again, it's coming from here. The scream and everything came from there. Uh, and then we're going back to now you have 10 letters when you're doing your counterclockwise eye rotation. So, da, da, ha, na, na, ta, da, 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 ha, na, pa, na, pa, ha. Okay? And obviously, you'll be going do, 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 do. And then again, the bindu point. After you do enough of those rotations, you're going to focus on the dot there for the Bindu point when you're moving into saying the mantra, the base mantra. So every time you're doing the alphabet letters, 
then you'll stop and then you'll do your count on the rosary, the mala, that one over and over. Sorry, my brain's not firing very well today. Uh, the deity is Agni. Agni is the deity of fire, the tattva of fire. Um, where the tattva is going to be a whole different thing. Probably going to be two or three videos. So we're going to stop right there. We're going to have the tattvas. Um, Agni is a courier. You burn a thing, you burn a request, whatever that is, it burns up and it goes, he takes it to the gods. He doesn't have speedy shoes, but he gets there in his chariot. I feel like fire is a lot cooler than speedy shoes. Me too, me too. Uh, one of the biggest differences, and I'm going to kind of preach on this a little bit tonight so that everybody gets an understanding. Zoroastrianism is completely based on a tar. And we obviously use the little fire thing to represent a tar. A tar is holy fire. Obviously, with Agni, you're looking at a spiritual form of fire. The two is a huge difference. But to make it the most basal, easy to understand, mm -hmm. Agni is a courier. If you want Shiva to have an offering and you want to ask Shiva for something, you go through Agni to do it. A tar is more of a cleansing fire. You come up to a tar, and if you lie to a tar, it'll burn your ass. And it will judge you, and it will scold you. But according to the Zoroastrians, the more pure you are, the less the fire hurts you. And your greatest form of purity is to be able to walk through lava without it bothering you. Oh, God. It's our God. <laughs> now, you tell me how the hell they got the reversion of fiery punishment in the lake of hell when it was originally the thing that purifies you and makes you holy. I don't know where that inversion happened. I don't know how or where. Obviously it lies somewhere within a shul and a couple of other places like Hades and so forth. But originally, when I say that the fires of hell were originally the fires of heaven, I mean that. To them, this molten lava shit it's supposed to purify you. Your spirit can walk right through it. It don't hurt you. And it's just like being in a warm spring. And that to them is fire. Fire is judgment. Fire is thou shalt have done this and now thou shalt be burned. <laughs> fire burns everything. <laughs> and then they have these nine holes. And there's these rituals that these nine holes they have to go through. And some have fire in them and some don't. Some have oil in them. You can kind of see where this is going. Uh, and they have to do these so many days, so many nights. And when they're not doing the purification nine hole ritual, they're fucking tied up in a hut until the priest says they've been purified enough. And then they can walk through fire? Not necessarily. That just means that they have paid the money and they paid the due, and now they're back on the path of doing the dog with the right way and being holy and just and righteous. But, I mean, it would stand to reason that if they thought that someone who's purified could walk through fire and whatnot, then after all those rituals of purification, you should be able to walk through fire. The fire's it's still really hot. It's still really hot. Yeah. It's your spirit, man, not your body. Oh, well, see, they should probably be a little bit more upfront about that. <laughs> if you spiritually had to walk through it, I'd be like, yep, I did it. <laughs> all right, I'm done. That's a take walk. Totally walk through that fire. But yeah, then there's actually things where uh, if the sin is bad enough, they'll fucking take him out to the nine holes and just behead him and go on. And that's where the whole fucking beheading shit from Islam comes from. It actually comes from Zoroastrianism, where if you fucked up bad enough and you pissed that fire priest off bad enough, he will just cut your fucking head off and go on. That's all I do. And that's where the whole fucking cutting everybody's head off comes from is Zoroastrianism. But they never talk about that. Because all ration is all about good thought, good speech, and, and good works, and being nice to everybody. Well, cutting someone's head off isn't bad if you're doing it for the right reasons, apparently. Apparently it's okay. Murder is okay if you're doing it the right way. <laughs> Murder is okay if you're doing it to cleanse them after they're dead. Exactly. For loopholes. Kind of like Catholicism and, the, and you know, the reverse exorcism where they burn the body to save the soul kind of shit. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> <laughs> So getting back to the Hindu version of fire, <laughs> where you're uh, making your offerings and burning them. Um, these are going to be higher offerings. 
There are lower offerings that you could do, and they're specific. Uh, they're just those, um, and those specifically work with using malas, pictures, yantras, and then the mala that you have, you end up throwing it in the person's path. You know, like the old school black magic shit. You know, you're doing the thing to the stone, or you're doing the thing to the mirror, or whatever, and you leave it to where they walk over it every day, and it affects them day by day by day by day. It's similar to that. Um, obviously, the element is fire. Uh, the sense is sight, seeing. Um, it's over feet or movement. That's the action is, the movement of the feet, specifically, because I guess it's over technically your center of balance. Um, the other thing is, um, one of the important aspects which I don't, you don't read about too much is recharging prana, specifically in the Mani Pura Chakra, by being outside in the sun. That direct sunlight and the, and the good radiation that comes off of that directly affects the Mani Pura Chakra and recharges the entire body's prana or spiritual energy. Hmm. Even though that our religion is specifically attuned to lunar energies, we as a battery for those lunar energies need the solar energy to recharge ourselves. That's why I feel better after standing like sunbathing for a minute. 20 minutes. Hmm. They recommend direct sunlight, that you can be in the cold, it doesn't matter, on the Mani Pura Chakra every day. And if you're having issues with pineal gland or your Ajna Chakra, take off your glasses, close your eyes, sit down, and stare directly into the sun, but the sun is hitting that directly for 10 to 15 minutes. It gets all weird and red and veiny in your eyeballs and shit, and obviously you don't want to look at it with your eyes, but you do want to have that directly on the Ajna Chakra. And it's also one of the things that helps decalcify the pineal gland as well. So, um, working with the solar deity, that's my Pura, it is the solar chakra, and Agni, he's supposed to be the go between us and the sun, or us and the other planets, us and the gods, us and the things above us. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. uh, and that one is Ram, we obviously covered that. So those are the next two chakras. Um, I really don't know what more else to say, other than we're spinning them in reverse. Um, um, you said pe uh, most people don't get past that one, why not? Because in order to get the Kundalini to rise from here to here, you have to get here to there as well. So you have to get them both to join here. So then you would work the three lower ones and then the top three and then then have them work on the heart chakra? Um, what it's supposed to be is Kundalini awakening in the base chakra. The base will pop, that one will pop, and that one just pops. I mean, it's literally just on their own. I mean, I literally just, I wish Kelsey was here so she could describe it. What happens then is it's easier for two people because it'll draw, um, the, the, the concept of the Shakti, the female power, it's not really, they, they call it female to make it easier to understand, but it's the essence of power, it's the essence of motivation, it's the essence of moving. That's what's starting moving. When you bring in the constant, the, the Shakta or the Siva aspect, the constant non-moving, constant observing aspect, it's easier to, when you have a male and a female, can join the heart chakras together. And that's when we get into tantric stuff. And the heart chakra and all that crap is going to be all one lesson next time. But to break it in, um, to bring up that heart chakra and to get the kundalini there to meet with the siva, there has to be an activation of uh, the Ajna Chakra and that activation comes from constantly doing the uh, rotations and the meditations on the bindus. So once the emotions are enacted that moves the logic to come together with the emotions. 
and emotions by I don't talk I'm not talking about subconscious emotions like the reptilian mind. I'm talking about the higher emotions that we have as human beings, such as compassion, love, hatred, you know, more uh, powerful. Well, I shouldn't say more powerful because the primals are the most powerful. I guess the more resilient, the ones that really hit us hard and are vexing versus the needs ones. Because the needs ones we can put down and ignore for a period of time, but those ones that are just really strong and outstanding, we pretty much react to them. And now is the type of emotion that we're talking about there. Does that make more sense? Which is why they call it like tugging at your heartstrings and stuff, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about the whole concept of angelic possession through that particular chakra and so on and so on. And isn't the solar chakra also the one associated with astral travel? That's your tether. And they prefer that when you astral travel, they prefer you to move from there and keep your tether there, yes. Um, I'm not deep off in astral travel. I don't, I mean, it's whatever you guys want to do. I'm trying to focus on getting this thing together, but from my understanding, the tether is at that line. It means if you tether it from your heart chakra, that's when you make yourself more of a beacon and the other realms to be attacked. And as long as you're tethering on the heart chakra, and it's also best to have sunlight on that chakra when you're doing that, to keep the energy uh, fueling the subtle body. That's why you see a lot of weird things in the temples when you're laying down and the sun's on them. And then usually once the sun sets and it moves off of the Mani Pira chakra, that's when they stop the astro -trail. weird stuffs. But I hope it all makes sense. We'll try to keep it as basic as possible. I don't want to get, especially since it's publicly recorded, I don't want to get into deeper stuff than that. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, any other questions before we're done? No? Cool.